Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Laurie Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll deliver a healthy discussion about your wellness this winter. Then, we'll make sure your investments and assets are fiscally fit. How's your health? Insurance. We'll check up on certain plan policies. Plus, no bones about it. The Bone Lady is the Brown's biggest booster. We'll chat with this cheerful cheerleader. And what rights do you have in a wrongful death suit? We'll offer answers. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. You think you broke your arm, or you're feeling faint, or you have severe stomach pain. It's time for a trip to the emergency room, but you know it's likely you'll end up waiting a long time before you're seen, and that's not making you feel any better. Metro Health has another option, and Dr. Chital Patel is here to tell us about it. Dr. Patel is the medical director for the Metro Health Cleveland Heights Emergency Department. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So let me see, Cleveland Heights? Metro Health Emergency Department. I thought Metro Health was in Cleveland, so what's up? Well, the main campus is in Cleveland. You're correct as far as that goes. Um, but we actually have health centers throughout the Cleveland area, and we are adding freestanding emergency departments to that health system as well. Um, so currently we have opened Cleveland Heights, which is a freestanding emergency department. We are also in the process of opening Parma within the next week or so, oh, and boy. then a facility in Brexville later on in the summer. You cover all parts of town. Yeah. So, um, and this is not just an urgent care facility, correct? No, not at all. This is a full service emergency department. We are open 24 hours a day and we offer full services um, as well, you know, as far as radiology, x-rays, uh, lab work, um, and we also have an attached observation unit should you need extended care and stay. Oh, okay. Um, who's actually performing the, the treatments? So you will be seen by uh, Metro Health Board Certified Emergency Medicine Physicians. And these are the same physicians that you know you would potentially see at the main campus. We are all fluid and can move from one facility to another. And the staff is the same. Okay, it's just more convenient than having to hit the downtown. Exactly. Now what happens if after you've, you've been seen, it appears that you need to be admitted to the hospital? Well, as I mentioned, we do have an observation unit. So if your admission could probably be managed within 24 hours, we can admit you to our observation unit where you'd be seen by observation physicians. Mm -hmm. um, but if it seems that you warrant a higher level of care, then we have a system in place to rapidly transport you to our level one trauma center main hospital. Okay, well that's good. You don't have to worry about that then. Yeah. Um, why is Metro Health committed to this establishing these emergency departments sort of out in the community? Well, Metro Health has always been um, committed to taking care of its community, and this is an opportunity for us to expand where we provide our care. Um, I also feel that, you know, part of the model is to create a streamlined process where you're seen by and getting quality care. It's done in a nice, timely, efficient manner, and you're being seen by people that are friendly and helpful, and it's all in your backyard. Yeah, the timely care, I think, is real important for a lot of people. Oh, absolutely, and that's gonna be a priority for us. How, have, how has the community liked the one that's been open now in Cleveland Heights? Um, so far, they've been pretty happy with it. I think that they like having um, doctors that they can trust in their backyard. All right, sounds great. So if you need to go to the emergency room and you want quality care without a long wait, Metro Health has the answer. Freestanding emergency departments in Cleveland Heights, Parma, and soon in Brexville. My thanks to Dr. Patel for treating us to timely information about these neighborhood medical options. And to learn more, use the information that's coming up next. To learn more, call Metro Health at 216 778 7800 or log on to www.metrohealth.org. Next, it's time for your annual evaluation. But first, since this is the month we celebrate presidents, let's take a closer look at one thing they all share. It's an item that all have worn, though rarely in public or in pictures. Have you focused in on the answer? We'll see if you're right when we return. 
Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24 hour staff and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. All of our presidents have sported spectacles. Though their glasses generally do not grace their faces in front of cameras or constituents, Teddy Roosevelt and Harry Truman were the exceptions, having been photographed frequently in their eyewear. You need an annual physical. You need to see the dentist twice a year. And you need your vision and probably your hearing evaluated occasionally. But there's another checkup you ought to add to your checklist. And this one helps you keep financially fit. Jim Lineweaver is here to help you take the pulse of your portfolio. Jim is a certified financial planner professional with the Lineweaver Financial Group. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. So we're talking actually about an annual asset allocation evaluation. What does that mean? Yes. Well, <laughs> this is going to be your financial <laughs> checkup. So when you look at your asset allocation, what you're really going to do is take kind of everything in your portfolio and see what that mix is. So when you're considering stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and things along that nature, you got to make sure they're categorized right and they're the right percentages you want. Traditionally, when you're younger, you may be able to take on more risk. As you get older, you know, you want to make it more conservative. But in today's world, with all the dynamics and everything going on, it's very important on an annual basis to make sure that you have your portfolios invested in the right buckets. Okay, and you know, we're just past the beginning of the year. We probably have all of our paperwork in order from our various financial institutions. What do we do with it? Yeah, so this is a great time to review all that. So um, you're probably trying to go through all those papers and maybe have the New Year's resolution to get organized <laughs> and stuff. So if you need help, let us know. Uh, but what you want to do is this is where you're going to actually look at putting all your portfolio kind of into one summary. So we have a chart for your viewers because what it actually looks at is um, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And let's say um, you had you started the year and your mix was actually, you know, about 60% in equities and you had 30% fixed income and you always want the cash reserve, which is about 10%. But let's say it was a good year and the equities became ran up to 65%. So as opposed to potentially losing that in the future, you want, might want to bring that risk back. So take some of those winnings off the table, get your back, get yourself back to a 60% equity, 30% fixed income, and keep your 10% in cash. So that's where we rebalance the portfolio and look at that allocation, and on an annual basis really makes the most sense. Okay, depending on what the market is doing and what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. Exactly. So, um, but there are some areas I assume that we have to be aware of and take a look at no matter what kind of portfolio that we're really looking at. You do, because what you, you want to take into consideration is all the world economic environments. And it's kind of tough if you're running your day-to-day -day job and things along that nature. So this is where you really want to try to rely on a professional. But there are kind of bull markets out there. There are bad markets. Bulls are good, by the way. That okay. means the market's going up and we're all making money. If the market's going down, you know, that's a bear market. Uh, so depending on what type of market that we're facing, or maybe even it's just the stage of your life you're going through. You're about to enter retirement, or maybe if you're younger and you're going to start paying for kids' education, things along that nature. You have to make adjustments for this in your portfolio so you don't get blindsided. And being very proactive is a lot better than being reactive. So, you know, if you need to take some more money off the table because you know you have a car purchase coming up in the next year, or you have some things on your bucket list, there's maybe some travel and things that you mm -hmm. might want to do, that's where you can take advantage of some of these things. Because what we, what we find is that in the first few years when people retire they actually may want to spend a little bit more money than they should go be. Go crazy. Exactly, right. <laughs> they don't want to go too crazy. But there might be some years where you're in good health, knock out the bucket list, maybe five to ten years, and then you're going to get to a period of time where maybe your spending goes back down a little bit. So you have to make adjustments for that because you don't want to be taking money out of your stock or equity portfolio when it might be down, especially in these volatile times. you got to really look at it annually, huh? You do. And well, sometimes even more than that. Okay. It's time for a fiscal physical. Make sure your assets are appropriately allocated by reviewing all of your options annually. And for help, give Jim a call. The number's next. For more information, call the Line Weaver Financial Group at 1-888-313-4009 or click to www.lineweaver.net. Next, ensuring you understand
understand your health insurance. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. Learn why the Cuyahoga is a burning river no longer during a lecture on water quality and the health of Lake Erie. Presented by the Conservancy of Cuyahoga Valley National Park, the lecture takes place Friday, February 26th at 7 p.m., and the conversation continues afterwards with experts and activists. To pour out more information, call 330-657-2909 or log on to www.conservancyforcvnp.org. You're turning 65 and you're still working. Do you sign up for Medicare or do you wait until you retire? The wrong answer could have an adverse impact on your benefits. Amanda McFarland is here with the right responses to these important questions. Amanda is an account manager for Medical Mutual of Ohio. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So we know more and more people are working past that full retirement age, past 65. So how does that impact things when they apply for Medicare? Yeah, so whether you're going to be retiring when you're age 65 or you're going to continue to work, you can still enroll in Medicare. There are some important decisions that you need to make, and we would recommend that you do that three months before you turn age 65. Okay, decisions, oh no, what decisions? <laughs> <laughs> well, first you need to decide what parts of Medicare am I going to enroll in. So if you're with a group of over 20 employees, you may not decide to enroll in all of the parts of Medicare. Now, Part A, that's your hospital insurance. Most people enroll in Part A right away, and the reason is because it's premium free. Now, your Part B coverage, which is your medical coverage, or your Part D coverage, which is your prescription drug, mm -hmm. people may delay enrolling in those and then just pick it up when they retire. Okay, why is Part A free? Well, because we're paying for it now. <laughs> we, we pay for it while we work. So as long as you've worked 40 quarters, you're going to qualify for that Part A with no cost. Okay. Now, we would recommend that you reach out to your employer and see how enrolling in the Part A affects your insurance. Is it going to be Medicare or primary coverage? secondary or primary coverage. Okay, so it depends upon your insurance plan. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like most of us would say yes to part A, Right. but um, how do we know whether or not we should choose part B? Well, part B, most of the time you're gonna wanna enroll because if you don't enroll right away, you're gonna be subject to a penalty. The exception to that rule comes into, do I have group coverage available to me? So if you had group coverage with over 20 employees, you could delay that and not be subject to that penalty. Okay, well that's a good thing to know. Um, and why would you want to delay it? Why would that be a real good choice for you? Well, first is it's gonna save you money. Unlike Part A, Part B actually has a premium associated with it. So if you're not gonna get a benefit from it, why pay that premium when you're not really using it? If you're with an employer that has over 20 employees, that group insurance is what they call primary, meaning whenever you have a claim, it's gonna to send to your group insurance first, they'll pay, and then if you had any secondary, they would pay. Since the group is primary, there's really no benefit to having that additional medical, so save the money until you really need it. The other thing that it does is if you delay that Part B enrollment, it also delays your Medigap open enrollment. So Medigap open enrollment is a time where you can elect a Medigap plan or a Medicare supplement. Mm -hmm. And what that plan does is it helps supplement your Medicare. It'll pick up deductibles, okay. coinsurance. So you only get one Medigap open enrollment. So delaying the Part B would delay that so that when you retired, you could use it at that time. Okay. The other thing during the Medigap open enrollment is you can get a supplement guarantee issue. So what that means is you're not subject to medical underwriting. Ooh, which can sometimes be a big deal. It can be, it can be. So during that window, somebody could come to a carrier and no questions asked, we're gonna cover your pre-existing conditions and we won't decline you. But outside of that open enrollment, you could very well be subject to underwriting and they could turn you down. So it's Ooh. important that you take advantage of that when it's there. Okay, now we've been talking so far about employers with more than 20 employees, but what if you work for a business with less than 20 employees? Yeah, so if you're working for a company that has less than 20 employees, we would recommend electing A, 
and B. And the reason for that is because in those situations, Medicare is the primary payer. So claims go to Medicare first and then they would go to your employer coverage. Well, if you don't have Medicare, it's gonna go to you first. Mm. So you'd want that Medicare to make sure that you're getting your best opportunity and benefits. Okay, those is a lot of great information today. So there's a lot more to turning 65 than counting the candles on your cake. This is the time to carefully consider your Medicare options. Need help? Use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Amanda for spelling out these important options. Thank you. Find out more about Medical Mutual of Ohio by visiting their website, www.medmutual.com slash 2015 options or call 1-866-488-3266. Next, she is fantastic. It's time to get up and go. An exercise segment on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and we're here today to show you how to strengthen that core and the ever important abdominal muscles. You ready to go? Let's flatten those abs. Let's do it, all right. We're gonna do a basic crunch today. We're gonna start lying flat on the ground. We want our feet flat as well with our legs bent at about a 45 degree angle. From here you have two options, either place your hands above your eyes or you can give yourself a hug and cross your chest. All we're gonna do is keep your chin pointed towards the ceiling, squeeze the abdominals and bring your shoulder blades off the ground. We're looking for 15 to actually 20 repetitions here. All right, how you feeling, Lori? Oh. <laughs> Keep them coming, come on. Oh, we need at I least three it. to I four. I can do it, I can do it. You got it, all right. We need at least three to four sets of these. Remember, slow and controlled movements, and you gotta remember to breathe. Do not hold your breath. You're looking good. Six packs on the way. All right, everybody, <laughs> now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. Here in Brownstown, it's not always easy to be a football fan, but when the chips and the score are down, you know you'll always get a boost to keep backing them from the bone lady. Today we're gonna to meet the artist and author underneath the orange outfit and learn how to win at life even when the Browns lose. Say hello to Deborah Darnall. Hi. <laughs> Some people may well, not recognize you. Isn't that the you. truth? <laughs> win at life even when we're not winning on the field. Whoa. Yes, we had to do we that. We need that in Cleveland. So you actually have this book out. It's got a lot of insightful advice about the importance of being yourself. So how did you become the bone yes. lady to begin with? Well, my motto is be who you are. And, you know, and I also, you know, if you want to wear a beehive wig and go to football games, by <laughs> golly, do it. And um, actually, I just grew up a Browns fan like everybody else in this town. Um, and when the expand, I was living in Columbus when the expand, when they left and mm -hmm. when the expansion draft happened in 99, literally I woke up and said, I'm painting my car like a Browns helmet and I'm going to put an eight foot bone on top. And everyone said, no, you're not. That's a Volvo. You'll ruin your car. <laughs> and that was the first time I didn't listen to anybody. And I followed my gut feeling and I was just obsessed. So I worked on my car, worked on my car, and then I thought, well, they're coming back in August. I better be done with my car. So I entered myself in a 4th of July parade in Columbus. And I thought, well, I just can't be normal and be right. in this parade. So I made the Bone Lady outfit the night before. And I always say Bone Lady is what happens when you drink too much beer and you own a glue gun. So <laughs> it's something that it just happened for fun. And I tell a story in my book. And it was, a, I just, right out of the gate, it became, it was just this roller coaster ride. I won't go into all the details, because you have to read about read the, the book. read the book, that's right. But the whole thing is I didn't plan any of it. And I did it be out of my love for the Browns and my passion. And what I found as I was um, on this journey that sort of crescendoed and kept growing and growing and growing, um, um, I realized that uh, it was about, for me personally, my self-worth, and I didn't have a lot of self-worth as a kid. And so it made sort of empowered me to put on a costume and go to football games. At, but before you were the bone lady, you were actually an artist painting murals and things. So tell us about yes. that part yeah, of Yeah, I still am. I'm a self-taught artist. And I didn't um, go to art school and I didn't set out to be an artist. And here again, I followed my gut. I, I think when you're meant to do something, opportunities open for you. And it, you just need to walk through the door if mm -hmm. you choose to. And, um, and I did that. And so I've had this 30-year career of 
being an artist, I'm a painter, and um, and it kind of goes hand in hand with my Bone Lady world. And I wrote the book myself, and I'm very um, because I, and I didn't write it to tell the whole Bone Lady story of oh all the things I got to do and mm -hmm. you know being a visible football NFL football fan. But I mean, I tell some of those things. But the reason I wrote it is because I want people to know that there's no one like you on the whole on the earth, and you're unique and special just because you're here. And we live in a culture that I think is hard on us and tells us we're not good enough. You have to look a certain way. You have to make a certain amount of money. You know, we're constantly being beat over the head that we're not enough. And I wanted to empower people that if you listen to that voice in your head and you follow your heart. Um, it's going to lead you to magical, wonderful places. And it's never too late, um, even for your audience, you know, if mm -hmm. you're even towards the end of your life or, t you know, moving towards that and, you know, you've been made to fit in the box your whole life, it's never too late. It's like come out of the box. Be who you <laughs> really are because the world yeah. needs you. The earth needs you. That's that's a great inspiring story and part of our theme on the show is act three when you're kind of retirement moving into that new frontier what are you going to do and this is great advice for yeah those and a lot of people give up and think okay boom I'm old I can't everything's it's <laughs> over it's done with well no it's not you know and but I think our culture is really hard on people who are are getting older um, we don't revere our elders we don't celebrate um, wisdom and knowledge and a life lived mm -hmm. and so it's never too late to be who you are excellent advice the book is candid and comical, and Deborah Darnell <laughs> shares it all in the book, Lady, including this advice, be light, be love, and be who you are. For the full story, buy the book. Now, to do that, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Deborah for being herself with us today. Thank you so much. And if you're a Browns fan, like me on Facebook, The Bone Lady. All and right. say hi. All right. Thank you thanks. so much. To order the book, The Bone Lady, Call Gray & Company Publishers at 216-431-2665 or click to www.grayco.com. Next, putting to rights a wrongful death claim. Here at Metro Health, you know you matter when it matters most. Here, we are the city's best at preparing for the world's worst. Here, we are the only verified burn center in Ohio for adults and children. Here, you'll find exceptional clinicians with extraordinary hearts. So the work we do here at Metro Health makes an impact here, out here, and right here. Metro Health, we're here for you, for all of you. Did you miss a phone number? <laughs> did you miss a phone? It's all fun and games here on the set of Golden Opportunities. But did you miss a phone number or website? Then here's your second chance because we're going to list all that information again. And then we'll be back with help for surviving a tragic loss. Last week, we talked about how a car accident can lead to a long-term investigation to determine who pays for what. But that may not be the end of the story. When you have been devastated by the loss of a spouse or close family, family member, nothing can make you whole. But if your loved one died in a tragic accident caused by the negligence of someone else, you may be entitled to file a wrongful death lawsuit. Here to discuss this important topic is my law partner, Michael Solomon. Hello, Lori. So tell us briefly, what is a wrongful death case? Well, it's basically you know, someone whose who, uh, wrongful death is caused by uh, someone's negligence, a third party negligence. And for example, it might be a doctor or a hospital with a patient who they've committed some malpractice and the patient passed away. You get an auto accident, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. that could cause the death of somebody, or a long-term care facility, maybe the, the resident uh, passed away and uh, maybe because there was some negligence with the medicine or the general care, some sort of 
problem that was caused by someone not doing what they should have been doing. Okay, so what kind of compensation are you entitled to in this kind of a case if you're a spouse or a family member? Well, money damages that might be for a loss of consortium or companionship or maybe additional costs, uh, loss of health benefits or, or, or funeral costs, many, any sort of costs that have, have resulted from this wrongful death. Okay, and so it kind of sounds like that one size doesn't fit all. It depends on who died, under the, what circumstances, what happened, who was involved? That's right, yeah, I mean, uh, the attorney's gonna look at it and, and figure out you know, what sort of damages that you can legitimately ask for, because not everyone can get the same damages, not everybody, you know, gets a multi-million dollar judgment as you mm -hmm. write, read in the paper. So it's, it's really, someone's gotta look at it very carefully to see what's realistic. Okay, so is there any kind of a time limit for filing this kind of lawsuit? Well, that's important. There is a general statute of limitations that, you know, two years from the date of death is the general statute, but it all can be shorter also depending on the sort of uh, damages and, and accident that caused it. So it might be, for medical malpractice, for example, might be much shorter than two years. So don't sit on your rights because then you'll lose it completely. So you really need to go and ask what's right. going on and how long do you actually have to that's file right. some kind that's of right. action. Sit down like with this. an attorney and, and figure out what your rights are. Okay, sounds like a very important decision. Yeah. While nothing can bring back a loved one, the purpose of the wrongful death lawsuit is to try to compensate you for some of the losses you have because of the death of your spouse or family member. For more information, please give Mike a call. His number is coming up next. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us on next week's show. It's the Academy Awards. So who will win the Oscars? We'll preview the possibilities. Then is your smile ready for the red carpet? We'll help you be worthy of any camera close-up. And if you're ready to sell your home, we'll unpack advice to help you with the big move. But until next week, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you.